Austin. Um, we praise God for you guys regularly. Um, and we're so grateful that as weeks go forward, things of normalcy are kind of are, are accumulating. Um, it's nice to see everybody's faces. Um, if you brought cards at, for teachers, please leave them at one of the tables as you leave, either if you're driving at, at the check-in station on the way out, um, the same place you leave your tithes and offerings. And if you're down here on the grass or underneath the tent, you um, leave them over here. There's a station right by uh, Fellowship Hall. How's everybody feeling? I, it's, it's still kind of weird just missing. I, I, there's a, now there's an even bigger gap. I miss all the tents. But uh, now I'll keep, lock eyes with everybody over here, and I'll be preaching to the sunglasses. Anybody's got sunglasses on? No, I'm just messing. Um, what am I going to say? I think it's time to start worshiping the Lord. All, obviously, I, I, I loved hearing Micah's prelude, right? Are you with me? Maybe flash your lights instead of honking. I'm kind of a, I've, I've been told you're probably annoying all the neighbors. <laughs> so, so I saw some lights flash. That's a, that's a pretty cool way to do it. Um, anywho, let's hear this morning's call to worship, which comes to us from Psalm 106. The psalmist writes, Praise the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Who can proclaim the mighty acts of the Lord or fully declare his praise? Blessed are those who act justly, who always do what is right. Remember me, Lord, when you show favor to your people. Come to my aid when you save them, that I may enjoy the prosperity of your chosen ones, that I may share in the joy of your nation and join your inheritance in giving praise. Let us worship the Lord in spirit and in truth by singing to God be the glory as found printed in your order of worship.
Good morning. I have just a couple of announcements this morning before I begin. First is our drive through trunk or treat is coming up on October 31st at 2 p.m. This is an all church event, so please join us. I'm gonna be right here in the back parking lot. Um, also, this week on Wednesday is Elsie's birthday. Please join me in wishing her a happy birthday. I'd sing, but I'll spare you my off key notes. So, a couple weeks ago, Rob and I spent time cleaning out our garage, and we came across some old movies. They were all in different formats. There were VHSs, which you need a VHS player for. There were DVDs, which you need a DVD player for. And there were Blu-rays, which you need a Blu-ray player for. All of these have been invented in the last 20 years. What do you think they'd invent next? When a new version is made, the old one stops being made, and eventually no one will want a Blu-ray or even a 4K anymore. So people who want to watch movies or TV shows will have to keep up with the change. Everything changes. There is always something new. It can be hard to stay with the latest trends, be it clothes, music, or even what words we say. Wouldn't it be pretty funny or even a little weird if I walked around saying groovy all the time? I don't even know if I'm saying it right. <laughs> I don't know, is there a certain thing to it? Um, like it was in the 1960s. But if I said cool, that would be totally normal, right? Well, this world is constantly changing. What's cool doesn't stay cool forever. People change too. But do you know who always stays the same? God. You can see in the Bible that God stays consistent. You can always count on him to love you. If you feel alone this week, remember that God is always there for you. He is unchanging. 2 Timothy 2.13 says, If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. So be thankful today that God isn't like the world with a new version of him every few years. God doesn't change at all. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for always being there for us. Continue to be with us in the week to come. Keep us healthy. Keep us safe. Amen. At this time, all children and youth are dismissed to Sunday school. Thank you. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But when we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sin together. O oh Lord our God, you call us to work for a world where all will be fed in dignity. But we find ourselves distracted by our own desires. You call us to seek justice and peace. But we are satisfied with injustice and discord. us to your will by the power of your spirit so that all may know your justice and peace through Jesus Christ your son our savior amen anyone who is in Christ is a new creation the old life has gone a new life has begun know that you are forgiven and be at peace Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, I know it says in your uh, bulletins we're doing heart of worship, but we're going we're gonna to do a little reversal on you and do good, good father first and heart of worship towards the offertory because I, I think that fits better. We've got the keyboard back today.
there's a red there's a red button that works now okay usually that's green that's uh that's groovy my son makes fun of me because i say fresh and he says you're the only one who says that dad but it's coming back i guarantee it yeah i'm bringing it back you say it with me danny fresh right we're gonna call everything fresh that man that's fresh yeah that was a fresh song man uh we are in a series based on the website www. I think there's too many W's. Dot, uh, blesseveryhome.com. And if I haven't said it before, I'll say it again. If you have a computer and you are semi proficient, sign on to that website, give them your email address, and they will email you names of neighbors. And scripture verses to pray over those neighbors. It's very low impact, but I think it gives a huge return because it all starts with prayer, right? That's what we were learning in September is um, God has placed us in, in, in the places that he's placed us so that we might pray for those that he puts in our path. Then as we start to pray for those uh, men and women who are at the supermarket, uh, checking our groceries out. Um, there are mailmen and mailwomen, our neighbors to the right and to the left across the street. As we start praying for these folk, you start to care for them. And so that's what we're, st- we're studying in God's word this month. How can we enlarge in our hearts for the people that God has placed us in the midst of? Um, it's simple, but it's still, um, I'm inviting you on this adventure with me to do something that we've been called to do 2,000 years ago by our Messiah. Um, go and make disciples. And I think it starts with in praying for the people that God places in our life and enlarging our hearts for them. And as we're doing this, we're looking at our Savior, our Lord Jesus the Christ, and we're trying to figure out some ways that he cared that we might emulate. And so this morning we're looking at Matthew chapter 9, verses 18 through 26, and that is, as part of just getting our hearts ready, um, I want to say in Matthew chapter 8, Jesus has really um, shown that he cares by reaching out to the misfits. He's done miracles amongst misfits. And he, he shows that he cares about the people of the earth, about human beings, you included, me included. And he cares about the misfits. We're studying this morning Uh, He's about to show that he cares by reaching down. Like he's been reaching out in chapter 8. In in the verses that we studied this morning, we really see God wrapped in flesh reaching down into our worlds and caring for us. Without any further ado, open your Bibles up, if you got them, to Matthew chapter 9, verses 18 through 26. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay down, come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his cloak for he said to her for she said to herself if i only touch his cloak i will be made well jesus turned and seeing her he said take heart daughter your faith has made you well 
And instantly, the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house, Am I on again? Yes. This is awesome. <laughs> where was I? I think, I, where, did, where did I say? Where was I say last? I'm in 23? Okay. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, go away, for the girl is not... We tested this. We tested this right before. We tested it. Now it's on, right? Yep. Correct? All right, I'll start with 23 again. Okay, somebody's honking. I like it. Okay. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a, making a commotion, he said, Go away. The girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand. And the girl got up, and the report of this spread throughout that district. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What a neat text, right? Uh, I, I don't even know. I, I do know where to start. I'll just start with reading my notes here. Jesus Christ cares for two unclean people in this text. Why were they unclean? The woman's been hemorrhaging for 12 years. In, in Levitical law, a woman hemorrhaging is, is, is seen as unclean, is, is not worthy to go into the worship service, is not worthy to go into the, the, the sanctuary. The woman who is dead, she is also unclean. Because you remember we, we learned uh, in Leviticus also that if you touch a, 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 a corpse or a dead body, you're rendered unclean and you can't go to the temple. This reminds me of a Chuck Norris joke. <laughs> anybody heard any Chuck Norris? Does anybody who know who Chuck Norris is? Chuck Norris was a... I don't know when it was, 80s, 90s, I don't even know. He was a karate star. Uh, he, he made terrible karate films. And, uh, but somewhere in the last decade, for some reason, people started making Chuck Norris jokes. And one of the Chuck Norris jokes that floats around is when Chuck Norris jumps into a pool, he doesn't get wet. The pool gets Chuck Norris. Does anybody follow that joke? It's funny, right? I think it's funny. <laughs> when Jesus walks up to these sick women, he doesn't get sick. They get well. He's like an antivirus. He's a healing presence. He's a lightning rod of God's power wrapped in flesh. This text is astonishing because all the rules that, that, that have been set up between God and man for a thousand years at this point, probably 2,000, 3,000 years at this point, are being undone because God is doing a new thing, a new covenant. And Jesus is a game changer. So Jesus Christ cares for two unclean people. Notice there's all kinds of little tidbits. Um, 
verse 18. What's, what's noticeable about that? It's a leader of the synagogue. Look to your right and look to your left. We are rich. We are not the down and out. We are the up and in. This is a story for us. This is a story for a Presbyterian, right? Because all the, like, this is a leader of, he probably has all kinds of rules he's supposed to be following. He's not supposed to be approaching Jesus and saying, hey, you need to come and heal my dead daughter. I'm flying off. I'm flying off my outline. I'm going back. But there's all these tidbits in here that I just, I love them. They're so attractive to me because there's so much. This is one of those texts. This is one of my applications. We should be hovering around in times like this. I'll come back to that in a second. He not only cares for two unclean people, He cares for two unclean women. Why is that significant? Has anybody ever read the Bible before? Has anybody ever done any historical context? Has anybody ever looked into what times were like back then? This is actually the first public healing of Jesus to a woman. And so this father walks up to him and says, My my daughter, my baby girl is sick. My baby girl's dead. You got to come help. I got faith that you touch him or you touch her and she's going to be okay. She's going to be well. Some commentary, come, some commentators think that the hemorrhaging woman heard him say that and heard Jesus or saw Jesus stand up and start following after him. And she thought, this guy deals with women too? This gospel's for me too? This isn't just a man's club. This isn't just the the boys' club. God cares about girls. What? Game changer. One commentator put it, we're still trying to catch up with how progressive and how forward-thinking Jesus the Christ was. Notice what heals What heals in this story? What, what heals in this text? It's the faith. Faith is the conduit. The faith of the Father. Faith. The Father says, but come. It's looking bleak in my hometown. It's looking bleak for my little girl. But come, please, come. You hear, the, you hear the girl. If only, if only I can touch the garment of this man, I will be healed. And then there's laughter. Notice towards the end of the text. First of all, why are there flute players? <laughs> right? I don't know. <laughs> that, remember, I, t- I talked about uh, how they had a system of grieving. Even, even uh, like low income families were expected to have at least two flute players as m- mourners. They had a way of grieving. And remember, that was a couple weeks ago. I was like, we need a way of grieving, but that's another sermon. Go listen to that podcast again. But there's flute players and there's laughers. Jesus says, I'm I'm about to change, I'm about to heal her. They all start giggling. (laughs) Maybe it's nervous laughter. Maybe they don't know who they're dealing with. But what does Jesus say? This is one of the most forceful things that Jesus says. Hey, get out. Clear out. And it sounds like there's a crowd. Get out of here. Clear out, clear out. What can be in this room? The Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, that's myself, that's what he's saying, and faith. If you ain't got faith, get out of this place. 
If you don't know who I am, you don't know what I'm dealing, what you're dealing with, get out of this place. You're disrespecting the father who said, hey, just come and heal my daughter. This is going to be a brief but amazing sermon because it's short. It's, this is all there is. What are some applications? They're easy. We need faith. One of the things that I've, I've grown to love about being the pastor of this local outpost of God's kingdom is the wisdom. I meet with these men on Wednesday morning and uh, day timers. And there's three or four men that every week their prayer request is for more faith. Do you know what that says to me? That says that I, there's some wisdom. Because the older I get, the more I realize I don't need answers. I need faith. I need faith that God's going to carry me through. I, I need faith that things are going to be, or things are in God's hands and He's going to take care. I need faith that if I could only just touch the living God, my innermost parts will be mended back together. I need faith that if God shows up, the game is going to change. I need faith to start looking outward rather than looking inward at myself. To be called to the, the hurting and to the lost. To the places where God wants me to be for the people that God wants me to care for. And I'll repeat again, study this text. Find in this text healing in a Jesus who cares about what ails you. You may, may not have fallen asleep. Maybe you have spiritually. Maybe you're here this morning and you feel like you're talking to a wall when you pray. You've drifted out of God's favor. Or you feel like the Holy Spirit has left you. Maybe you're sad because of this coronavirus. You just missed the touch of human beings. Maybe you've lost your way and you've confused some things. Maybe you've gotten caught up in some sin and gone the wrong direction. Maybe you haven't been hemorrhaging for years. But maybe you don't have life left in you. Maybe you've had a couple too many days of like, I don't know if I want to get out of bed. I don't know why I would change out of pajamas. Nobody's going to see me. I want to speak to you this morning. Jesus wants to meet you here. Right here, right now. He wants to meet you this morning. And he wants to take you. He wants to take you. Not the person to your left, not the person to your right. He's personal. He gets right with you. He's alone in the room with you. He wants to take you by the hand and raise you from the life of, of dreariness, of death and decay, of boredom, of pointlessness, of joyless. And he wants to walk you. Walk you through whatever is ahead of you. Into joy. You know what? I can't wait. I can't wait to meet that little girl in heaven. <laughs> right? I can't see anybody nod or anything. Marsha, where are you? Okay, good job. <laughs> I love it. All right, I'm going to close in prayer. And then, Heavenly Father, precious Lord Jesus, powerful spirit, I thank you for how personal you are. 
I thank you that you care. I thank you that you care outside the lines, outside the boundaries. I pray that you would equip us. I actually first pray that you would take those of us here this morning who need to hear from you. Take us by the hand. Come into our lives. Walk us into your joy. And for those of us that have been walking and you've been walking and holding our hands through, I pray that you would embolden us. That we would care for the ones that think no one cares for them. Help us to love like you love. Help us to care like you care. And all of God's people said, Amen. Now it's the part of the service where we join in with God's plan by giving our tithes and our offerings. If you're here on your way out, um, just drop them on one of the stations in the offering plates, your tithes and offerings. If you're at home listening to the podcast, please mail it to Presbyterian Church of the Covenant, P.O. Box 2128, Costa Mesa, California, 92628. And before I get a couple texts, this building, this is something I learned as we started the podcast. This building is 92626. Our P.O. Box is 92628. So every, every couple weeks, somebody texts me, no, it's not that zip code. Yes, it is that zip code. The first time, it wasn't that zip code. But I've learned since then. <laughs> right, Kathy? Kathy Rasmussen actually taught me that. Thanks for being here this morning. Let's give back to God his tithes, our offerings, and let us worship the Lord. You know, there's a phrase that Perhaps many of you have heard in modern day tongue that says this, perception is everything. Can you guys hear me? Perception is everything. Basically, you can imagine a set of glasses and whatever current perception you're carrying is how you will see things occurring. It's like changing prescriptions. I think sometimes we lose perspective during the week and what Sunday does for many of us is just reset us, right? So we hear sermons and we sing songs and we go through the routine, but if your mind doesn't shift, then nothing really ever happens. And so what the intention of what we do here on Sundays is to set our perception like you went to the eye doctor, right? We set our perception into an intentionality of limitless faith where all things are possible. And so a song like The Heart of Worship that we'll sing here during this brief time together is really just reminding us that when everything fades away, whether it's the music we play or the ties that we bring or the words that we speak. When all of that is stripped away, what is left is the honesty between you and God. Let's come back to the heart of the truth. When the music fades and all is stripped away and I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's of worth That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song
Paul instructs us in Romans 12. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Standing on that promise, let us joyfully present our requests to God. Let us pray. Holy and magnificent God, we praise you this morning for your bountiful blessings and ever-present help in times of need. We pray for a world that is in desperate need of you, Lord. We pray for a fresh touch from your Holy Spirit in every nook and cranny of this globe, touching those suffering from poverty, war, famine, and natural disasters. May your worldwide church be called into action for those who need your help far and near. Father, help each one of us to pray without ceasing in the 23 days until our national election. We pray for a process that is honest and fair. Prompt every eligible American to vote and have their voices heard. We pray for our president, first lady, and all who are recovering from the coronavirus. May your hand of healing be on each one. We pray, too, for a swift and safe vaccine for this deadly virus to be available soon. May your hand be on all during this discovery process. Give them wisdom and the energy to continue their tireless work. Amidst all of this uncertainty, remind us, Lord, that you, you are the rock on which we stand. Lord Jesus, we pray for those in our midst, our family, our friends, and our neighbors. For those who are ill, bless them with your healing touch. For those who mourn, bless them with your comfort. For those who are lonely and scared, bless them with your presence and protection. For those who are in need, bless them with others to help. May each one of us be your hands and feet in our homes, our neighborhoods, and our communities. Wherever you need us, send us. Choose us, Lord. Choose us to do your work. Speak to each one of us with your words of affirmation and direct our paths. May our lives be meaningful and purposeful that one day when the veil is removed and we finally meet you face to face, we will hear your words. Well done, good and faithful servant. May it be so. Continue to unite your flock, praying together as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day your daily bread, and give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As a... Before I give the benediction, just a couple of reminders. One, if you wrote cards for teachers, please leave them on your way out at the check-in stations. Um, if you tithes and offerings, leave at the same place in the offering plate. And once again, I'd like to thank everybody for showing up this morning. It's uh, good to be amongst one another. Amen? Amen. Please stand for this. Yes, I got a couple of words, but just don't get crazy. Just don't get crazy. I love it, though. The joy is contagious. Uh, please stand if you're able to receive this morning's benediction. May God's face shine upon you. May the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit guard and keep you. And may the peace of Christ, which transcends all understanding, guard your heart and your mind today, tomorrow, and forevermore. May it be so. Amen. See you next week.